Alright guys, the word is out. We now know the specifications of the DJI Mavic 2 that was uh, rumored to be announced on the 18th of July. As you probably know, a DJI postponed this event, but apparently major UK retailer Argos missed that information and went along printing the catalog with information about two new upcoming DJI Mavic models. Let's look into nine things that we know so far, as well as which model I would personally go for after the intro. Improve your drone footage by subscribing to my weekly tips, test and tutorial. DJI will release two versions. One version that is called the Mavic Pro 2, containing a 1-inch sensor from the company Hasselblad that they acquired earlier. Hasselblad is a Swedish company that is well known for the high-end cameras, so it will be pretty interesting to see what kind of performance they can squeeze into a drone. The second one is called Mavic 2 Zoom and will offer 2 times true optical zoom but the sensor will be smaller. Even though this sounds pretty cool, they should be able to do something with the one inch sensor version as well, where they introduce lossless digital zoom in a similar way that Para did with an Afi. The zoom model offers the vertical or the dolly zoom effect directly out of the box. It's an effect where you zoom in on the object while moving backwards, creating a really nice parallax effect. This looks pretty awesome, but it's also pretty easy to do in post-production. So if you want to know how to do that, then let me know and I will do a tutorial about it. Comment for both models are. The live feed has been upgraded to 1080p from previous 720p, but I'm not sure how much effect this will have in real life for those of us that use the small screens. Range has been increased to 8 kilometers. This is uh, really not that important. I know this is a factor that many care a lot about, but in most countries you're not allowed to fly the drone out of sight anyway. The number 8 kilometer indicates that the connection between the drone and the controller is really strong when you fly, fly close by. So this is of course a very, very positive thing. And I would also assume uh, it uses AccuSync like the previous uh, Mavic Pro version. Max speed has been increased to 20 meters per second and no one understands 20 meters per second. So this equals 72 kilometers an hour or 45 miles per hour, which is pretty fast when you're going back and forward to a location where you need to film. But in general, these high speeds are not very usable for making video. Both models offers omnidirectional uh, sensing with APAS, which uh, I would interpret at least as coverage in the horizontal plane. But it would be a really nice addition if they added a sensor on the top as well for true omnidirectional sensing. The sensor on the top will help if you fly under trees or under obstacles and uh, the return to home is initiated so you can provide a collision there. That I would really love. It has a whopping 31 minutes of flight time. This probably translates to something between 26 and 28 minutes in real life but it's still pretty nice and pretty long time to stay airborne on one battery. Active Track 2.0, whatever that means, I would assume with a better camera and with the inclusion of omnidirectional sensing, it opens up for an array of new possibilities to do stuff. So this kind of justifies the jump in version number. What we don't know is uh, what resolutions are available. I would at least hope that the one inch sensor is on par with the Phantom 4 Pro at the 20 megapixel. If that is the case, we could easily see 4K up to 60 frames per second. How sweet would that be? The prices have not been announced yet, but I would expect there's quite a jump between uh, the Zoom version and the 1-inch version. All of this information was picked up by a side droning on from the UK. This is quite a scoop and I'm pretty sure that he would do a follow-up on this matter very closely. So I've included a link to the two original live streams that he did from the store, as well as a link to his channel. If you don't know Droning On, I have been following this guy for a while and he actually provides some really good quality information on drones. On top of this, he has actually busted this uh, Osita LV that is a Twitter guy from China that seemed to be the only source of information that the, every media was sucking up to at some point. He has busted him on several occasions, so I will definitely put my money on uh, this UK guy instead of uh, this Chinese source. So which of the two models would I go for with the information that I know now? Without knowing the prices of the two models, I would definitely go for the one inch Hasselblad camera version because this offers everything that I need to step up my video game, at least on paper. Especially if it offers additional digital zoom, that would be plenty enough for me. On top of this, the one inch sensor offers a quite a big step up in the dynamic range and I would expect and hope that I would be able to produce pictures 
on a video on similar level as with the Phantom 4 Pro. If that is the case, I'm totally sold. DJI, take my money. So what do you think about the specs so far? Which model would you prefer? Uh, throw a comment uh, below or head over to the Tech Drone Media Facebook group and let's discuss. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.